Today we're going to learn about perspective or point of view. Look at these two different photographs. Imagine where you would be if you were the photographer. What are the differences you notice in the two pictures? The top one is a bug's eye view. This is where we're looking up and seeing small things very large. The bottom one is a bird's eye view where you're up in the air looking down. Everything looks very small. Let's look at an artwork by an artist born over 400 years ago. Otto Marcius van Schrijk from the Netherlands was fascinated by plants and animals and even kept snakes, insects, and lizards as pets to study and paint. What are some details you notice when you look closely at this painting? Does it remind you of the bug's eye view or the bird's eye view? Hopefully you're noticing there are small objects painted here with a lot of detail showing. In order to see these things from this perspective, we'd have to be very low on the forest floor. We can even see underneath the mushroom. Let's try making a landscape from a bug's eye perspective. I'm going to start with the stem of my first mushroom. From this perspective, we'll be seeing underneath the mushroom. And so I'm adding the textured part of the underside of a mushroom. Next, I'll add a couple of smaller mushrooms that are lower down on the page. Since these are smaller and lower down, we won't see underneath them. Then I'll add some details. Have fun thinking of your own ideas. They don't have to look realistic. Then comes the horizon line. Remember to skip over the mushroom. Don't draw through it. Finally, I'm adding lots of fun details to make my forest floor look creative. Now it's time to paint. I'm using watercolor paint, so I'm going to make sure that I have my brush wet, but not dripping. So I dip wipe wipe in the water and then swipe it over my paints gently. I'm painting with a pretty small brush and painting inside all of my small objects first. I'll save the bigger background spaces for last. Notice how I'm painting all of the objects that I want to be red first before I change colors. This will help keep the brush and the paints as clean as possible so the colors don't get muddied. Once I'm ready to change, I tap my brush gently in the water and blot it on a paper towel to make sure that all of the red is off before I choose my new color.
time for the background. I switch to a larger brush and keep it very watery. When I'm ready to blend in my next color in the sunset, I make sure to put a little bit of water on the paper first and then paint right over top of it with my new color. It blends in and looks more realistic. Before I complete the large portion of the ground, I use my small detail brush to paint in some of the grass and add a bit of shadow with a darker green or blue. Then I'll use a wide brush and start painting in the first layer of grass. I use the paint palette lid to mix the shade that I want. I'm using a little bit of yellow and green to get a nice light green color. I use a really watery brush and just a tiny bit of color to add some shading in the clouds so that it appears that they're reflecting the sunset colors. I add a bit of shading underneath the objects on the ground. As a finishing touch, I use the tip of my paintbrush and add the texture of the grass on the ground. In order to make it look like the grass at the bottom is closest to us, I make it a little darker and add more of it. The grass towards the horizon line is a little bit lighter and not so detailed. This helps make it appear further away. I hope you enjoyed this video and have fun trying your bug's eye landscape. See you next time.